Hello and welcome. This is chapter number 12, three phase circuits of our Sudeku's textbook. In this lecture, we will be talking about connection schemes of three phase source and loads. Before this lecture, what we have seen till now in this chapter number 12, we have talked about three phase loads. What are balanced loads? What are balanced Y connected loads? What are balanced delta loads, delta connected loads? What are or what is uh, what is a sequence or what is a positive sequence? What is a negative sequence in three phase systems? How we solve uh, numericals or how we solve different questions related to positive and negative phase sequence in three phase systems. Today, we'll be talking about how a source, a three phase source is connected to a three phase load. And we have seen till now that a low, a three phase load is available in delta and y connection. Similarly, a three phase load is also available in three phase y and delta connections. So with these connections or with these options available to us for both source and loads, there are primarily four different combinations in which three phase sources can be connected to three phase loads. So these four options are number one, y, Number one, Y, Y connection. So Y, Y connection is we have the source in Y, we have a Y source and we have a load also in Y. Similarly, we have a Y delta connection. It means that we have the source connected in Y and we have a load connected in delta. Similarly, we have a delta Y connection. In this, case, in this connection, we have the source connected in delta and we have a load connected in why? Similarly, we have a delta delta connection and in this connection, both source and load are connected in delta configurations. Okay, so in this chapter, as we move ahead, we'll be solving or we'll be seeing all these four Y Y connection, Y delta connection, delta Y connection, and delta delta connections, and we'll be solving numericals related to that. So first case, First case is a balanced YY connection. So a, your textbook says a balanced YY system is a three phase system with a balanced Y connected source and a balanced Y connected load. So what is again, remember from our last lecture or previous lecture, what is a balanced three phase source? So a balanced three phase source is the source in which all the phase resistances, this, this and this are equal in magnitude and phase. So Z A N is equal to Z B N equals to Z C N or in, or in magnitude and in phase as well. Magnitude similarly phase N is equal to phase B N equals to phase C N. So all the phase impedances are equal. Similarly, this is for source. Similarly for load, all the phase impedances are equal, both in magnitude and phase. So here at load, we have Z A capital A N equals to Z B N equals to Z C N. And this must be equal in magnitude. This must be equal to magnitude. Similarly, this also equals all the phase angles should be equal as well. So if we have source, and load in this uh, or source and load satisfying these conditions, it means that our source is a balanced source and our load is a balanced source load. Okay. So uh, consider a balanced YY connection. So a balanced YY connection means that our, your source is balanced, your load is balanced and your source and load. So this is the source end, this is your load end. This is your load end, this is your source end. Is connected by a transmission line. So this is basically a transmission line. Transmission line or you can also call it as a line. So so this is also connected with a uh, transmission line or line and that line has an impedance of ZL. 
right? So this has an impedance of ZL. Similarly, the source from or the line between uh, point B and uh, of source and point capital B of load is also connected by ZL. And similarly, uh, from point small c at the source to point capital C at the load, the, uh, uh, the connection is with the help of our transmission line of impedance ZL. So also remember that for a balanced transmission line, or, so, or sorry, for a balanced YY system, the transmission line should also have equivalent or same impedances. For example, ZAA is equal to ZBB equals to ZCC. This should also be equal. So this is impedance of line or transmission line. There must be equal as well as the phase. So the phase must also be equal. This must also. So this, if these consider, uh, conditions satisfy, then our system is a balanced YY system. Remember, ZN is the point where we can connect the neutral of our source to the neutral of our load, and the impedance between this two, these two connections is ZN. So if we have a balanced three-phase source, we can also neglect the ZN impedance. But in case of unbalanced load, this impedance is necessary and it comes into play as well. So let's move ahead and see it further. So in, we have seen that, that ZS, ZL, and ZS, Z line, so sorry, we, I, let me call it Z uh, impedance, source impedance, that is ZL, ZS, small s, line impedance, ZL, and load impedance, Z capital L. So these are my three impedances over here. So in case of a balanced load, what we have seen is that that ZS, ZL, and Z capital L remains same for a phase. So for one single phase, it remains same. Similarly, for phase, it, for, for phase A, it will remain same. For B, it will be same. And for C, it will be same. So we can convert our overall effective impedance as ZY and can redraw this circuit as something like this. So we have a source that is supplying an overall impedance of ZY. And this ZY can be considered as three equivalent three phase impedance as well. ZY, ZY, ZY. So each phase between A and N the impedance can be summed up as ZY. Similarly, uh, from between phase B, the impedance can be summed up as ZY. And similarly, between phase C, the impedance can be summed up as ZY. And ZY is equal to source impedance, line impedance, and load impedance. This is how we can do it or make an equivalent circuit. Then the, how we analyze these uh, or how we analyze this circuit or how we solve this circuit. So let's see, uh, assuming that we have positive phase sequence. So let's assume that we have a positive phase sequence. It means that voltage VAN is V peak or peak voltage angle of zero. Then comes, so with positive phase sequence, remember A, B, and C. First A voltage will come, then B will come, then C will come. So positive phase sequence, A, B, C, after A, voltage BN will come, BB, angle of minus 120 degree, then VC will come, angle of minus 240 degrees, or remember the best practice is to keep the angles between zero and 180. So after, so it will be plus 120 degree. So this is, these, these are my phase voltages. Now, what are, then, uh, or you can say now, what are the line voltages? So if we have to find out line voltages, so say for example, uh, in this diagram, we have a Y connected system that is looking something like this, okay? So this is my point A, this is point B, this is point C, and this is point N. So between A and N, this is my one phase between neutral and point C, this is my one phase. And this is my one phase. So 
this is how a phase is determined between a live and a neutral. So A is your live point or one point and the neutral point. We have one phase, we have one phase, we have none, and we have a total of one, two, three phases in this network. So now we have voltage between A and N as say VAN, right? And this is a phase vector phase and because we are donating this voltage as a phase voltage. The reason being because the source frequency, the source or the generators we have at the source, they are rotating at same frequency and are generating either 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz of frequency. Remember in the North America, we have 60 Hertz frequency in the Indian subcontinent, we have 50 Hertz of frequency. So now the question lies is what is the voltage between VAB? So v, VAB, or VAC, or you can call it VCA, or VBC. What are these voltages? That is a key question. So these voltages are actually called line voltages. Line voltages or line to line voltages. So line to line, why? Because this is the neutral line, this is one live line, this is one live line, and this is the third or the another live line, live line. So we have, we are basically measuring voltages between two live lines between A and B. So this is voltage line to line, not phase. So this is basically V phase is not equal to line to line in Y connection or Y connected systems. So our phase voltage is not equal to line to line in Y connected system. And let's see how this thing is done. So first case, we have to calculate line to line voltages. So VAB, so remember uh, we have VAN, VAN as VP angle of zero. Then we have VBN as VP angle of minus 120 degrees. And we have VCN as VP angle of plus 120 degrees. Okay, and this one was our positive sequence. This one was our positive sequence. So now let's calculate VAB. So VAB, remember these voltages are phasors and phasors are type of vectors. So we can use the vector addition as well. So VAB is VAN vector plus VNB uh, vector. So the N and N should align themselves. And VNB, it means that VAN minus VBN vector. So NB is not equal to BN. Remember vectors in, uh, are in one uh, direction specific. So this is how you do it. And then VAN, this is VP angle of zero minus VP angle of minus 120. So if we subtract these two vector, we come up with something like this. So my VAB will be under root three times VP angle of 130 degree, oh, sorry, 30 degrees. So this is how line voltage will be, uh, or the actual line voltage will be. Similarly, if we have to calculate VBC, VBC will be V uh, BN plus VNC and VBN minus VCN. And this will be V peak angle of minus 120 degree minus VP angle of plus 120 degree. And this basically comes out to be under root three times V peak angle of minus 90 degrees. Okay, then similarly, VCA or uh, line to line voltage between uh, uh, point C and A, this is VCN plus VNA, and this is can be written as VCN, uh, sorry, minus VAN, uh, and this comes out to be VP angle of minus uh, plus 120 degrees minus V peak angle of zero degrees. And this comes out to be under root three times V peak angle of minus 210 degrees. So now what can we 
see here. So we can see that our line voltages, V A B, V B C, V C A, are under root three times what was the magnitude of the phase voltages. So line voltages are under root three times the phase voltages in Y connected system. And similarly, there is an angle or 30 degree lead angle between the phase voltages as well. So line voltages lead the phase voltage by 30 degrees. Similarly, if we see line B to C, B to C from BN, it is 30 degree leading. Similarly, uh, CA, CA is also leading also this is uh, minus uh, 210. So uh, this will be minus 240 or uh, plus 90, you can call it as uh, under root three VP angle plus 90 degrees. You can call it as well. That, again, it's a good practice to uh, give the angles between zero and 110. So this is uh, what is represented here or what is shown here. The magnitude of the line voltage is under root three times the magnitude of the phase voltages. Remember, this is for Y connected system. So if your voltage uh, or if your system is Y and your source is Y and your load is Y, then it is fine. And if you're, uh, or you can say that if your source is Y or your load is Y, and you are, uh, you have to analyze the load and source, with, uh, and you have to, you know, convert the voltages between phase uh, voltage and uh, between line voltage and phase voltage or line to line voltage and phase voltage. This is how you do it. Remember, it is different for delta connected systems. So, uh, uh, and we will see that when this, then that part portion of uh, our topic will come. So in this case, or in uh, VL, or where we have the line voltage equals to under root three times V phase voltage. So here, what we have is that uh, the V phase is the magnitude of the phase voltages we have. And similarly, the V load is the magnitude of the, uh, oh, sorry, V line, VL is V line to line. And that line to line is the magnitude of the voltages between two lines, AB, BC, and CA also any of these values. These are equal and these are equal because we have a balanced system. That is why these voltages will also be the magnitude of these voltages will be equal. Remember the phase of these volt, uh, these uh, uh, angles or the angles of this line voltages are 30 degree lead to V phase. Okay, so this is for uh, for phase angles for the phase angles for this line to line voltage phase okay so this is how uh, uh, this is what it uh, i have uh, mentioned in the last slide as well so this is how it is seen so the line voltages lead their corresponding phase voltages by 30 degree from figure figure a illustrates how the line voltages ab form the corresponding V phase voltages, uh, V, A, and B. So how we uh, determine line uh, phase uh, line to line voltage A, B from corresponding phase voltages A and B. So first of all, we draw these vectors, V, A, V, uh, v B, V, C. So uh, this is how, uh, remember the rotating frequency is, so if we have to add these two vectors, VA and VBN, so VBN, we, ha we have to basically do this, do this sort of addition. So A vector, this is B vector, and this is your VA, B vector. So this vector B is opposite in direction of BN. So that is why we uh, do this sort of thing. Uh, so remember VA, uh, uh, so remember VP, angle of zero minus VP angle of minus 120 degrees. This is what we have done and we got under root three V line angle of plus 30 degrees. And this is this angle that is with respect to this uh, reference axis or X axis with X axis. And remember in our last lecture, we talked about that we have to set our X axis as reference axis and across this axis, 
your the, all these three phase vectors are rotating and once uh, uh, and when we are talking about sequence we talk about which uh, uh, the sequence in which these vectors cross this x axis or this reference gear similarly in figure b in that or figure B illustrates the, the determination of all the three line voltages from these three phases. So this is how we determine all these three line voltages from these three phases. So then the sum of all the line voltages again is zero as do the phase voltages. So if we add VAN plus VBN plus VCN, we'll get zero. Similarly, if we add VAB plus VBC plus VCA, and the sum will be zero because if you add all these this is uh, what we'll get and the easiest way is to just simply do the phasor addition of all these phasors or the phasor vector addition of all these phasor values and you will get the answer as zero okay then comes how we calculate the line uh, currents in this case so remember the easiest way is to since the uh, is to use this circuit diagram and in, in this circuit diagram, we can see that uh, we have a balance system or uh, so the, uh, the best case or we, our life is pretty much easy in this case, just simply apply KVL to the circuit shown and we obtain the line current for the YY. So the YY uh, connection. So between A and A, this is line current A, the current that is flowing in the line that is connected the source point A and the load point A. So this is the line current. Similarly, so current that is connecting source point small b and the load point uh, B, capital B, the line is, uh, the current is IB and same goes with IC. The also remember, since they are connected with the help of certain transmission lines or certain, uh, you know, connectors, so the current in that connector is also uh, uh, can be said as the line current as so line current again uh, the voltage uh, between and that line current is generally calculated between this point and the neutral point okay uh, so just simply uh, vbn oh sorry uh, van so this is the voltage in this section between A and small capital N is the source voltage VAN divided by ZY. Similarly, IB is VBN divided by ZY and IC is v, uh, uh, VCN divided by ZY. If you are going to uh, see the values, so eventually we get IAN. IAN is uh, VP angle of uh, zero degrees divided by Z. This is IA and you can also write it as this. Similarly, uh, all these values can be written as like this. So if we are going to add IA plus IB plus IC, we'll also get a zero because our system is balanced. And this basically shows that there is no current flowing in the neutral direction. And that is what you can see from here. So the current entering the loop, current entering the loop, current entering the loop as per the Kirchhoff voltage law and there is some current should be leaving. So the, the thing is whatever the current is entering is equal to whatever the current is leaving from this node or the value of neutral current and that value comes out to be zero. That is why we can easily write IA plus IB plus IC equals to zero and this and if this is not equal to zero remember if this is not equal to zero this is a best case for uh, unbalanced system as well. So there is some neutral current flowing. It means that your system is not balanced. Also, the voltage across the neutral wire is zero. So this voltage across the neutral wire between this end and this end, there is no voltage drop or so that is uh, another uh, advantage of uh, having a balanced system is that, that we can you know neglect this neutral wire. Then the how to do or uh, much simpler the calculation. So the neutral wire can be removed from a balanced system without affecting the system. Okay. So a neutral wire can be removed for a balanced uh, uh, system without affecting the system. And the practical case for this comes when we have long transmission lines. And in these transmission lines, there are conductors uh, 
for all these three phases, for example, one we have three phase transmission lines and we have multiple uh, conductors going in phase A, similarly multiple going conductors going phase B and multiple conductors going in phase C as well. Uh, and we can use earth uh, or the land, you can say though, our actual earth as the acting neutral conductor. And such power systems, as you remember, are uh, well grounded or uh, at uh, are what they call it as critical points to ensure safety. And these critical points, and there are uh, certain techniques in which, which are used to determine these critical points uh, for any power uh, or any power transmission or slash distribution system. And uh, when, whenever the, uh, a designer or a power engineer is designing these things, all, all these calculations are done and wherever there is a critical point, um, it is ensured that there is a, a required uh, protection uh, and safety mechanism is used to ensure human uh, safety or the uh, safety of the operator who is operating the line. So uh, this is how actually we have uh, uh, the power systems or uh, power coming to our homes or to our industries or to our universities or wherever we are. Uh, then, uh, so coming back, so the line current uh, is actually uh, the current in each line of the system. So we have a line for phase A, we have line for phase B, we have line for phase C. So it is actually the current. And similarly, phase current, phase current is current in each phase of the source or the load or for the load and source. Remember, we have again capital A, capital B. Uh, capital C for the load and small a, small b, small c for the source. And with phase, it means that phase A will have a certain current, with phase B will have a certain current, and phase C will have a certain current. So in a balanced YY system, the line current is same as phase current. So IL is equal to I phase. Remember, this is a very key important aspect. So we, what we have seen earlier, we have seen that line voltage is under root three times V phase with an angle of plus 30 degrees. Or if you are talking about magnitude, VL magnitude is under root three times V phase magnitude. Okay, but in case of line currents, our line current and phase current are same for Y connected systems, Y systems, or you can call it Y connected systems or Y systems. So an alternate and easy way to analyze a balanced YY system is to do per phase analysis. So that is uh, why you, you see that usually the analysis is done for one single phase and for the next phase, just advance it by 120 degree and for the next phase, just advance it by 240 degrees or uh, lag it by 120 or 240, depending upon the phase sequence or whatever the conditions are. So just simply find out or draw a single diagram or a single circuit diagram of one single phase, or this is called uh, uh, one phase circuit diagram. So just draw one phase circuit diagram calculate the value of IA provide or whatever the missing uh, value it is given. So for example, in some cases you are given voltage and current, you have to find impedance or you are given current and voltage, current and impedance uh, to have to find voltage or you have given voltage and impedance, you have to find out current. So you can just simply use uh, the Kirch or the uh, Ohm's law V equals to IR and it, instead of IR, V equals to IZ. Uh, so in this case, a single phase circuit analysis, the calculation of line current will give you something like this. So remember IB, IB will be IA angle of minus 120 degrees. IC will be IA angle of minus 240 degrees or IA angle of plus 120 degrees because of in positive phase sequence. Okay, so in positive phase sequence, these are the values you can easily use. Then let's solve a, an example. Uh, this is example 12.2 of your textbook. And in this example, we are asked to calculate the line currents in the 
three wire YY systems. Okay, so we have something like this. So uh, this is our source. Uh, so this is neutral at source, uh, and this is the neutral at load. So our load is again in Y. This Y. This is how our load is connected, and similarly our uh, source is connected in Y. Uh, so what will happen here? So what we or what we see here is that there is no source impedance is equal to zero. No source impedance is there. Z line impedance is five minus J two ohms. The line second line is also the same. Third line is also the same. So yes, line impedances are same. Similarly, Z load is equal to ten plus eight J. 10 plus 8J and 10 plus 8J, all the Z load are same. So we have a balance system. So overall, uh, ZY, ZY, remember from the formula ZS plus Z line plus Z capital load. So um, ZS is zero plus five minus J2 plus 10 plus J8. So this comes out to be 15 plus J6 ohms. So this is my equivalent Y impedance. So now basically what I, we are doing, so we are ma making equivalent, equivalent uh, single phase circuit. So equivalent single phase circuit, the equivalent single phase circuit will look like some, will look something like this. So this is source, and this is source and everything or all the impedances are moved to the load, okay? This is how an equivalent circuit would look like, call it A, call it N, okay? This is capital A, this is capital N. So we do not have A or so, so something like this. So this is N and N and connected. So this is an equivalent circuit would look like. So current IA, we have to calculate. So Vs, remember single phase uh, or between A and neutral is 110 volts. So my IA value will be uh, Van divided by Zy and this Zy uh, or this wing will come out to be 110 angle zero divided by 15 plus J6. And my IA value comes out to be uh, 6.81 angle of minus 21.8 degree amperes, okay? So this is how I calculate my IA. So if, so now we have to calculate the line currents. It means that line currents are IA, IB and IC. So the easiest thing, and this is remember, uh, we have a, balanced system with us. So for a balanced system, we have IA uh, angle of zero equals to uh, IA, or for example, uh, uh, yeah, we can say that IA is something like this. Then we have IB, IB is IA angle of, or we call it IP. So IP angle of minus 120 degrees. Similarly, IC is angle of IP angle of plus 120 degrees. So this thing can be written as IA angle of minus 120 degrees. And this can be written as IA angle of plus 120 degrees. Okay, so now we have calculated IA actually as one uh, as 21 point, uh, sorry, as 60. 6.81 angle of minus 21.8 degrees. So what is or what is the value of IB? IB can be 6 6.18 minus 21.8 minus 120 degrees. So IB value will be 6.81 angle of minus 141.8 eight degree amperes. So this will one will be my IB value. And what will be the value of IC? IC will be IA angle of, so minus 120 and 28 plus 120 degrees. So this comes out to be 6.81 angle of 
plus 98.2 degree amperes. So you can also uh, write um, uh, IC as uh, 120, uh, 21.8 minus 240 degrees as angle 6.81. And this comes out to be 6.81 angle of minus 261.8 degrees. And these two uh, values will be the same. There is no point, but again, this is a good practice or good engineering way of writing all the angles below uh, 180 degrees. So this is uh, how we use the concepts which we have learned in this uh, section uh, to solve a YY connected system. A brief overview of it, remember, uh, for a YY uh, system, again, I'll use the next slide. So remember for uh, YY connected system, what we have, we have line voltage is equal to under root three times V phase voltage plus a lead of angle three, or in terms of magnitudes only, line voltage magnitude is under root three times the magnitude of phase voltage. Similarly, we have line currents equal to phase currents. Okay, so for currents, uh, this is for currents, this is for voltages. So for voltages, remember line voltages, uh, this is uh, line voltage, and this is your line current. This is your phase current. And this is your phase voltage. Okay. So this is a, an important thing that we have to remember. Also uh, for balanced, for balanced, three phase system, but how we have to solve it? Solve single phase circuit and use the 120 degree or 120 degree symmetry to calculate the currents. So if we have to calculate the current or for that matter voltage, uh, just use uh, or solve for one phase and then just use symmetry for uh, uh, phase, other phase as we have seen here in this problem. We calculated IA using a single uh, equivalent circuit diagram. Once we have calculated IA, we, cal we use this uh, or these concepts from symmetry or for a balanced system and then we calculated the value of IB, IA, and IC, okay? So, so this is how we solve such questions. So see you next time with our Y delta systems. Till then, take care and thank you for listening.